hi everybody today uh, i'm going to start sharing something which i think is very important now i told you in the last video that we'll be developing kind of five games increasing in complexity starting from a very basic game and that was just to make sure that we do understand or we do know like you know what are the things important or how to tackle any kind of python programming for example python scripting or machine learning or artificial neural networks and all that but to be able to do any kind of programming we would need a kind of logic behind you know every now and then you have to use logic so logic building is a very important exercise and in order to do that i think the best bet is and that's a that's why like you know they teach data structures and all i think the best bet is to go over a few algorithms and uh, it will really help you guys now what are the kind of algorithms i'm talking about i won't specifically go into any kind of algorithms as such but uh, i will try and share my kind of understanding what i gather from logic building and how to develop logic building and uh, depending upon what where we are for example if we are talking about little nested for loops or while loops why what's the difference between both and when do we use which and when do we combine conditionals and you know stuff like that so depending upon what's the requirement we'll pick that kind of algorithm but uh, to begin with i would want to discuss when do we use nested for loop now because this is very important and most of the algorithms i don't know if you guys have already seen but most of the algorithms that you see they they work on the basis of uh, nested looping so we would need to understand why do we need to have nested loops now uh, let's begin and we have this list 1 33 just random numbers i'm picking 5 7 and then 40 Two and then nine okay so these are the few so how many numbers do we have we have six numbers so these are the few numbers which i'm going to be using randomly and now if i was to ask you three questions the first one what if i wanted to just print each number yeah so you're going to be printing first number second number and so on second question is what if i want to ask you can we iterate over this list and then put the maximum value towards the end okay so first one is just printing printing second is max element towards the end right third is can i just sort it for example if you're putting the max element towards the end then second largest you have to uh, put that in the second last location and so on and so forth so that way the resulting list will be a sorted list right so basically sorting okay now without uh, wasting any more time on this let's quickly jump on to the python Okay, so for example, if I have a list and then randomly I'm just punching in values 23, 4, 3, 5, 88, and 7. Okay, so these are the things. And now the first question was how do we print it? Now, whenever you have to do any, any kind of repetitive task, you have to resort to for loop more often than not. Why? Because for loop, basically for loop is used to keep doing the same thing over and over again so for example if you want to print numbers you're just going to be saying for i and a right and then you're just going to be saying print and then you print i okay so this is what you need to do and when you run it you're going to see so it's printing you all the numbers right now second question was what in case if i want to print the maximum or uh, maximum value and if i want to take it towards the end now for that we need to understand that for maximum value to be taken towards the end we have to have a kind of logic so the logic is okay i'm going to be starting from the first element and then i'm going to compare it with the second so 
one is smaller than three so we don't do anything oh sorry one is smaller than 33 so we don't do anything to one and then we move on to the next one yeah and then 33 is it smaller than five no it's not so it needs to be shifted towards the right so and the five will come in place of 33 like so so we'll have five here and over here we'll have 33 and then 33 greater than 7 yes so we put 7 here we take 33 here and then is 33 greater than 42 it's not so we don't do anything to that and then we, when we compare 42 with 9 then obviously 42 is greater than 9 so which is why it's going to come there and 9 is going to go there so 42 so the resulting value you have resulted in your whole this process whatever you have been doing and this has resulted in 42 being at the last element last location so that is basically you have bubbled the maximum value towards the end so this is the uh, you can say the workhorse for bubble sorting okay but mind you we have just sorted one element okay we iterated over the list and we just got to the point when all the other elements you can't really say for surety for sure you can't say with surety that all those elements are also sorted so this is just one bit okay now let's try and look into the code and see how it's done so okay so we have this list and we want to bubble out the maximum value towards the end and for that we'll have to use the logic and logic says for i in a now we need to understand when we talk about a so this is an iterable yeah this is an iterator so when you say a so it's gonna basically get hold of your values but we don't need values we need indices right remember when we when we were trying to say okay we have to uh, pivot our look pivot the first indices index second index third index and fourth index, and so on so we just need to get hold of the indexes indices and not the values itself so what do we do so basically what we do we just say we use the inbuilt function which is called range and then we do length of a and then one more thing which you need to keep in mind always when you're dealing with a list is that it starts from zero the indexing starts from zero so this is zeroth element and this is first element this is second element and so on and so forth so when you get to this point and obviously when you're comparing when you're saying when you're saying check if this number is greater than the next one there is no next number so you're gonna be getting an error so which is why we just need to go up till second last digit minus one yeah so you just say okay we just need to check if a and then because i told you this i is index so you have to say if i yeah is greater than a i plus one yeah then you do the following you swap and how do we swap you can use the temporary variable in order to store value of one variable and then try and switch it over but there's an easy way all you need to do is i and you comma i plus one yeah because these are the two variables which you need to switch so what you need to do you just put like that i plus one comma a i right so i value is going to go into ai plus one and ai plus one's value is going to go into ai i hope it is clear so this is all you need to what you need to do and in the end you just need to print a okay let's see if we can bubble it out so the goal is 88 towards the end see so we've got it now you see uh, this bubbling of the highest value it just happened once right so we've just got one value towards the end but what if we want to sort everything out like you know the highest value towards the end end and second highest value in this place and third highest in this place and so on and so forth and that's your list so how do we actually do that well basically we obviously because 
inside we know that in order to get one value towards the end we need to have one iteration right and in order to do it for all the other values we'll need to have another iteration so inside the outer iteration or outer loop we will be doing that so for that what we need to do so basically we'll do like this for i in or just let's say okay in range and then you say length of a right minus one and then you go up till zero i'll tell you why and with a step size of negative one and now you pick everything from here and then you indent it okay and then you just need to change here k now why do we need it because we already know once we have already we need to put that once we have already bubbled out the one value let's go there again so once we've already figured out the one value the last value so we don't need to take care of that so in, in the next iteration we just need to go one two three four five okay and in the next iteration we just need to go four values because the other two will be sorted so which is why we do this and as far as program is concerned so you go from length of a and over already told you why you do minus one because you don't want to end up trying to fetch the value which is not even there because that's going to throw you an error so the outer loop is that and inner loop so outer loop value will be like five four three two one and zero yeah because you are going for negative indexing so that's basically the outer loop let me just write it outer loop right and this one is inner loop so outer loop is for just to tell how many elements we're going to be taking in the inner loop and let's try and run this and see if the list is sorted you see one three four five seven twenty three eighty eight so all the values have been bubbled out to their respective locations and this is basically what bubble sorting is and uh, i hope i made myself clear and just make sure you do understand this and make sure that you are really comfortable with this because you'll be doing this over and over again as far as any programming python scripting or gaming or whatever you want to do you have to be very much comfortable with this for loop thank you i'll see you in the next one